Okay, so the rest of the year, I'm just going to show you some different ways of um, getting at data as well as visualizing it um, and sort of how to interpret some of it. Um, one of my favorite data visualization programs is called Gapminder. Um, and so this is gapminder.org. This is the front page. Um, I don't particularly like the front page, but um, the tools is the best part that has a lot of really good stuff there. So you can go ahead and just click right on tools if you want to. Um, I'm actually going to scroll down and I'm going to go to um, basically some examples that are already sort of preset up. I'm just going to go, um, as you might realize from now, I'm sort of an energy geek. So um, I'm going to go to CO2 emissions uh, since that sort of deals with energy as well. And so we're going to go there. Um, it's going to load load the tool that um, I'm going to show you how to use. Um, you can also just go to this how to use video that might be helpful as well. Um, but there's several different things. One thing I really like about this is it's it's a bubble chart. It's a bubble scatter, scatter plot, which means there's income on this side, so how much income. Um, and this in this case, it's per person, GDP, per capita. Um, so it's per person income. GDP is just like a measure of um, the total wealth of a nation or total output of a nation not wealth output of a nation and per capita just is means per person okay and this is co2 and it's tons per person now the first thing I want to show you is that um, you know we we have the co2 emissions the first thing also this is a log scale right so right here it may look like you know right on one is I don't know about Pakistan uses a uh, about one ton of CO2 per person a year. And then it doesn't look like it's that much up the graph, but if you go to this, China is 7.42, and just a little bit up the graph, the United States is 16.4. Okay, so um, basically, but the other, um, it's, it's not a um, straight line graph here, um, scale. So, the other thing to notice is that as you increase your income, you generally emit more CO2. And so that's why it's sort of like a trend line up this way. And that's what you always want to look for. Is there a trend line? Is there a pattern um, to the data? What's going on? Okay. And then um, the other really cool thing that you can do with this is you can play, and it will play it over time. Um, so if we do that again... We were in the middle of something. So it's starting with 1810 or whatever. Um, I'm going to speed it up considerably. They can speed it up here. I'm going to go to the most speeding up we possibly can. Um, and so dots are popping up, not because new countries are being created all the time or something. It's more just that the data exists for, for those countries. Um, and you can see, you know, throughout history, it's generally kept especially once the industrial revolution hit that you the more income you have the more co2 emissions you have um, i'm going to follow two different countries here i'm going to i'm going to click on china and i'm going to click on the united states i'm going to play that again and i want you to show i want to show you what happens what's sort of cool oh, what happened to china hold on let's go back oh that's right china there's no data for china yet that's why it's not there so you can see, um, you know, the income and the CO2 emissions of the United States are, are rising. Um, and if we pause here, the United States is about 11.9, that's tons per person, in 1906. And about 1900, it was 8.53, so 1898. So somewhere around 1900, it was about 7 to 8 um, tons per person. So let's go ahead and play it again. Um, so, so if we see China sort of going up in CO2, but not necessarily up in income, um, for a while, and then they sort of start making a big leap forward in income, um, and really starting to catch the, um, United States in CO2. However, that being said, if now we can look over time, China's about the 7.4. So per person, they're basically where, for CO2 emissions at least, they're where the United States was back in um, you know the, the turn of the 19th century, so 1900. Um, I'm not sure if that's the turn of the 19th century or not, but in basically the year 1900. So 
um, this is a really this is a good way to compare two countries. Now, in David McCandless' video that you've already watched, he really stressed using normalized data or dividing by person. You saw that with uh, um, you know comparing who has the most troops with China and comparing you know who um, spends the most on their military and whatnot. So, but if you normalize the data, it makes much more sense. So, I just want to show you an example here of using unnormalized data. So instead of the CO2 emissions per person, if we just go in energy, um, I think it's actually environment, environment, emissions, CO2 emissions yearly, and we get the same thing. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't even realize it did that. That's nice, it keeps China and uh, the US, I thought I was gonna have to do it again. Um, so you might say, oh man, well, yeah, China's just, just pouring out CO2 at, you know, 10.3 million, um, I think it's 10.3 billion tons because it's 1,000 tons. So 10.3 million thousand or billion tons per year. And measly old U.S. is just doing about, you know, about half of that. So, you know, we should be really worried about China. But, again, you have to think per person emissions. China has a lot more people than the United States. And so this graph is kind of misleading. So whenever possible, you should look for the per person or per capita um, statistics. And again, that's what this is. You can see tons per person is this one. Okay, so for your discussion board, I don't want you to use this graph. I want you to play around with this tool. You can look at some of the, the videos that the founder of this website, Hans Rosling, I think that's how you say it, um, made and how he answered some questions. And you're going to make a data visualization yourself. Um, and sort of show the trends, kind of like what I just did here for the CO2 emissions. Okay, thank you for watching.